So to start with this work on parenting, we can first ask the question, well, why would that be related to anxiety? What do people have about why these things would go together? And if you look through the literature on parental acceptance and anxiety, there's really two explanations that come up over and over about why these might be related. One of them is related to this notion that um, what parental acceptance may do is provide a particular kind of a context for children to learn regulation of emotion. It may provide a context in which uh, children are allowed to express their emotions, so emotion is tolerated, and a context in which children can explore ways of coping with their emotions and get help from their parent in learning how to cope with emotions. So that's one kind of explanation. A second one has to do with the fact that in the context of a parent who is very accepting, it may be very reassuring to a child that the parent is essentially sending signals to the child, I'm here for you and I'm available if you need it. And having that sense of assurance may uh, also make a child less likely to feel anxious. In terms of parent-child control and autonomy granting and why um, things like overprotection or psychological control might be related to the development of anxiety. Most of these explanations revolve around uh, self-concept kinds of, of ideas. And the notion has been that when parents are highly controlling, it might first of all interfere with children's developing sense of self-efficacy. So that uh, if a parent, for example, is being highly overprotective, it may not allow the child an opportunity to learn how to engage or to perform in different, you know, in different areas of their life, in different kinds of social tasks. And so it may interfere with them developing a, some, a sense of themselves as a competent individual. And also, if they've got a parent who's highly controlling, it may interfere with the development of them, of having a sense that they can, in fact, control their world, have an effect on their world, and so on. So what do we know empirically about the evidence between parent-child relationships and anxiety? And I really am talking now about anxiety, different kinds of anxiety symptoms, not specifically just social anxiety. Uh, a couple of years ago, there was a meta-analysis that was published reviewing all of this work. And the, this meta-analysis did indeed suggest that there is a link between parenting and anxiety, that both parental acceptance and control are related. Now, there were some interesting, more specific findings that came out of the meta-analysis. For example, the aspect of parenting that was most consistently related to anxiety was um, autonomy granting. Uh, and these uh, findings were stronger for studies where they had looked at anxiety disorders rather than anxiety symptoms and it was stronger for those studies where they had done observational assessment of parenting instead of child or parent report. Okay, so let me shift for a moment to talking about attachment. And I want to be clear about what I mean by the term attachment because it's sometimes used in slightly different ways. But when I'm talking about attachment, I'm talking about a construct that's really in the John Bowlby, Mary Ainsworth, um, tradition in which they really talked about how you can describe parent-child relationships uh, around the construct of secure-based behavior. And so um, both Bowlby and Ainsworth have talked about how an important role parents can play, and it's one of the things parents do, but one of their important roles is to function as both a secure base and a safe haven. And so the secure base idea is the notion that if you have a caregiver who's available to you, you may be more willing to use them as a secure base from which to explore and go out into the world. And also that if in your explorations in the world anything goes wrong, they can operate for you as a safe haven to return to for comforting. Now, uh, in addition to, oh, and I should mention one other thing there. Uh, so. Children can use parents as, as secure bases or safe havens. You can see it in their behavior, particularly with young children. It's particularly easy, 
to observe secure based behavior. In addition, children are also developing a corresponding set of representations about the attachment figure, which captures things like their beliefs about whether parents will be available in the future uh, if needed. Now, it turns out that there are, in fact, some interesting individual differences in terms of uh, uh, the organization of attachment behavior and whether you see clearly children using parents as a secure base and safe haven. Children who are described as securely attached are, by definition, those children who are very effective at using a parent as a secure base and a safe haven. However, uh, there are uh, some children who do not seem to show this pattern of secure base organization, who uh, show some form of what's called insecure attachment. And in the literature, they've identified three different uh, patterns of insecure attachment. Children who have an ambivalent attachment are those who have some concern about whether their caregiver will really be uh, responsive and available to them because they've experienced somewhat inconsistent caregiving. And so the response to this is to have a heightened concern about the availability of the attachment figure and they often show high rates of, of attachment behaviors as a way to try to pull in the attachment figure. Children who have formed an avoidant attachment with a caregiver are those who ha have had some history of rejection in their caregiving and in order to maintain a connection to a caregiver who's been somewhat rejecting of them, particularly when they express negative emotions, their strategy has been to be somewhat avoidant of the attachment figure when distressing events occur. And finally, um, in the last few years, they've been talking about another form of insecure attachment, disorganized attachment, which is the one that actually people have even talked about now as perhaps the one most likely to be linked to psychopathology. These are children who form a disorganized attachment. And the way that I tend to think of them is that these are the children who essentially lack a secure base and a safe haven. Uh, it, disorganization tends to arise when parents have been either psychologically unavailable, shown frightening behavior, or abusive. And so the the outcome of all of that is that they don't really come to see the parent as serving this role as a secure base and safe haven. Okay, so with that as background, um, we can ask why exactly might attachment and anxiety be related? And you may have some clues from even what I was describing before about um, why that might be related. So for example, in the case of secure attachment, uh, Bowlby, for example, talked about the fact that simply knowing that you have your secure base available, that in and of itself should lead children to feel less anxious, that they know they have this person available. So that has led to the prediction that children who are securely attached are uh, less likely to experience really a lot of different kinds of anxiety symptoms. Now, there's been a bit of a debate and discussion about whether there are particular forms of insecure attachment that would make a children at a higher risk to experience anxiety. Some folks uh, have really suggested that it might be children who have formed this ambivalent at attachment, insecure attachment, who may be at particular risk for various anxiety symptoms. So if you go back to thinking about what an ambivalent child is like, it's a child who is described as sort of chronically worried about whether the parent's really going to be there this time when I need them. And so because this sort of sense of worry and, and concern is a part of the pattern. Many people have suggested, well, that's the children who will be most prone to experience anxiety of the insecure groups. Notice this is different than the other hypothesis from Bowlby that it's just sort of the lack of a secure base per se that would produce anxiety. Now, more recently, uh, as people have begun to do more research in which they've taken account of kids who are disorganized, this has led to an alternative perspective that perhaps it is really the disorganized kids, those who have a parent who really is not functioning well at all as a secure base, say, haven, not even in sort of an intermittent way, maybe those are the children who will be most likely to experience anxiety.